What's up friends? Today I wanted to show you how to make a fun little pricing component, pricing section on your website. I had a request from someone who's in my Code Curious membership, Whitney. She does some great web design and some SEO consulting and she has this package section on her website where she lists the three packages that she has and she wanted to spruce this up a little bit and wanted some help with the code to make that work and I will occasionally do this for members and this seemed like a really fun project uh, to work on. So that is what we're going to do. We turned this section right here, which already it looks pretty good into something like this whereas you hover over the different items they pop up they scale up a little bit and the other items fade away and also when we're not hovered over any of them the middle option maybe like the best value option is scaled up and we don't have any opacity effect so I'm gonna walk you through how to just install the code and get this working if you just want to get this running on your website and then after that I'm gonna walk through the code step by step if you're a little more curious about how this code works and what it does I'm going to walk you through how that works as well. So let's dive in. All right, first things first, what I did to get this set up is I used a list section right here in Squarespace. So if we hit edit and jump into our section, you'll see that this is just a list section. And this is a little trick I learned from Christy Price, who is another fantastic person to follow. Uh, you can just add a section right above and remove all the spacing. And same here with your list section here, you, just with the settings that Squarespace gives you in the edit content uh, design area, we can just move this li list section up so we can have uh, a customizable section up here sort of title to this section so this is a nice little trick here but everything you're seeing here is just using our Squarespace editor we use no code to make this work uh, you see our list section has three items in the content tab our starter the upgrade the pro and then in our design tab we're on simple list center aligned three columns. Um, these are just images for each one of our list items. And then I just dialed in the settings on our styles right here. If you hit the three dots next to anything, it'll give you some more options here. I turned on the cards, changed around the padding a little bit, and then again in our design size and spacing a lot of styles i just dialed in change these to be however you want the whatever will fit uh, the style of your website but this is what i got to without any code you can make yours look the exact same okay but now this is the point we kind of hit a wall we need to add some code so let's dive in at this point this is where we're going to grab the code from my website and paste it on to Whitney's right here to get that new effect that we want. So let's hit exit. Uh, this is gonna be CSS we're gonna add. So I'm gonna scroll down to my website tools and go to custom CSS. Of course, you can also hit backslash on your keyboard and type in custom CSS and that'll bring you right here. Now I'm gonna paste my CSS right in here. So over on my website, I will have an article titled Elegant and Interacting Price Interactive Pricing Section. I might change the title, but it's going to be something like this. Uh, and then down here to the bottom, we're just going to go, you can click Installation, and it should scroll you down here. And you see here's just the installation instructions, and this is the CSS we want to use. So I'm just going to copy this, go back to our website, and then paste that code in. And now the only thing left to do is scroll down to that list section. We just need to target this list section in our code. So I am using this fabulous Squarespace ID Finder tool right here. If you're in Chrome, just go to the Chrome Web Store and just type in Squarespace ID Finder. You can just type that into Google, Chrome Web Store, Squarespace ID Finder, and it should pull up an installation page for this tool. Very easy if you're gonna be doing uh, custom Squarespace code and stuff. So this is my section ID for this list section. I'm just gonna click on that to copy, and I'm gonna replace everything right here. So I'm going to scroll in so you can see this. This section bracket data section ID equals one, two, three in quotes, end bracket. That is everything I want to highlight, delete, and then replace. And then we're good. I'm going to turn off our ID finder and you can see now we are set up with our three options that we have. A couple changes you might want to make um, here in the settings, border radius, maybe you don't want a border radius, change that to zero. That's totally fine. For this design, for Whitney's design here, 40 pixels looks pretty good. Uh, I also added in a few properties if you wanted to change the pixel or the border width around our items right here. So you could change that to one pixels and two, and you can change the color of your border if you wanted to there. Uh, but that's all the basic styling we'll have. Then we have two properties up here that changes 
how much we want each item to scale up as we're hovering over it, and how opaque we want our other items when we're not hovered on them. So if I want this to scale up a lot, we could change this to scale up like 150%. This is gonna look ridiculous, of course. Uh, but you can change this, dial in this number to whatever you want. 110 looked pretty good for this design. And then our, our opacity, I liked going uh, just really kind of over the top to really accent the feature. So I went 0 0.05, so like 50%. Uh, but you could do it just like a little lighter, maybe 0.75. And that's just a little bit more of a subtle effect right there. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to move that back to 0.5. Lastly, we're highlighting our second item right here, our middle item, which just ho so happens to be our second. But maybe you only have two items and you want to only highlight the first. Well, you can change that down here uh, on line 21 for me, but it's probably going to be a different line for you. But look here where we have this li nth child 2. So this is our default uh, our default highlighting. So I could change this to 1 and then our first item is going to be highlighted or 3 and that'll be our third one. So that is what's going to change our default highlighting. There we go. That's how this code works. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I'll show you real quickly on mobile too. It's not going to apply on mobile because there's no hover effects um, and there's and, and you get some sort of weird scaling sometimes. Sometimes the item might scale larger than our page and we don't want that. So we've taken it off on mobile. And lastly, it's just good practice right here to tell us right in the comments what page is this code getting applied to. So this is getting applied to my web design and SEO page. So I'm just going to say right here in my comments, I'm just going to say web design, design and SEO. And this is just to help future me know what this code is relating to because there's nothing in here that says this page is what this code is applying to. So this is just a little message to future me to help me out. So that's how this works. Let me know if you have any questions. Would love to answer any other questions you have. You can answer in the comments down below of this video or on my website. Happy to help out. Um, but next, stay with me if you're curious about what this code does and how it works and how I built it. There's some complex sort of selectors in here that'll be fun to dissect. So hang with me if you want to learn about that. All right, for those of you that are a little more code curious, well, let's walk through building this. Let's walk through every line of this and how I got to this. And I'll just sort of talk it out as I'm going through it. So first thing, let's just remove all of this and let's just start with our target. So we're just targeting our list section. So every list section in Squarespace, uh, it has our normal section ID that we can target. And then within that list section, we have an unordered list. So that's what we're targeting here, this UL. And in HTML, we have an unordered list and each item within the unordered list is an LI, a list item. So I could target each list item like this. Uh, let's just, just to show you, we'll just say background red, important, import, Tan, so we'll just force that just so you can see each one of our list items. These are our LIs, our list items, right? So that is how, that is, this is just the general targeting for what we're doing. So first, let's just add that border radius because that's what I want to add. So I'm going to add border radius of 40 pixels because that kind of matches Whitney's style and design here, right? And now let's start with just, there's three things we need to do. We need to add the hover effect. So as I hover over an item, I want it to scale up. And then two, as I hover over the item, we want to uh, fade out the other item. So that's called a spotlight effect. So we're kind of spotlighting the current highlighted, the current hovered item. So we want to add that spotlight effect. Um, and then lastly, we need to, by default, we want the second item sort of scaled up. Just scaled up, no uh, opacity issues, but just by default, that second item is scaled up. So that's what we're going to be working on right here. So in our code, let's first start with highlighting, with scaling up our list item as we hover over it. So li hover. So we're just targeting the hover state of our list item. I'm going to use the scale property, and we're just going to say 110%. So very simple. As I hover over it, boom, it jumps up like that. So this is good. this is okay, but we don't. It's like jumping. It's very jarring. So what we want to do is add a transition. So that'll smooth out the scaling effect. Now, by default, we want to add our transitions on the stateless target. So this is our li, our list item, without any state involved. So not the hover state, right? Um, and we want to add it here because anything we've targeted right here. If we add it on here, let's just show you. Uh, if we say transition 
scale and we want to transition over 0.3 seconds over with an ease function you'll see we hover over and it scales up it scales up nicely and then it just jumps back down and that's because this property is only getting applied when this matches and so as i hover off as I'm not hovering over the list item, there is no transition effect. And so that's why we always want our transitions on the stateless target right here, the stateless target. Now, as I hover over, you see it scales up and then it scales down. Now, here's another thing that I've added to the code. You'll notice there's a little delay as I hover over the items. And that's because Squarespace has added some global animations and these global animations are overriding some of our transition properties. So over here, I'm gonna add something else. We're gonna say transition dash delay. I'm gonna say zero seconds and I'm gonna important that. Typically, I don't like using this important tag in general because uh, it makes code messy. But when we're when we're we don't really have a choice at this point because we're trying to override some properties that Squarespace has added. So now you can see that scale up effect is getting added immediately. Great, boom, bada bing, bada boom. Step one, as we hover over the item, it scales up. Next, we want to add that spotlight effect. So as I hover over an item, I want the other items to sort of fade away. So let's add that. So as we're so this is this is the little trick. This is the trick we do for this. So um, we want to add a by default. What do we want to do? Okay, so we have targeted our unordered list right here, right? So the unordered list is the container that holds all of our list items, one, two, three. So as I hover anywhere over this container, once I hover over the container, I want to give, I want to fade out all of the items. So because we are nested right here, our CSS is nested within this target, I can reference this highlighted target right here using ampersand. So as I'm hovering over our unordered list, right, our list item should become opacity 0.5 so as i'm hovering over our list item right here change every list item to have an opacity of 0.5 and now again we also need to add this important property because we're overriding some style squarespace is added so now as i hover over every item goes opaque and as i'm not hovering over our unordered list everything goes back to normal this is only applied as we're hovering over our unordered list now we're going to we're going to override our override a little bit by as we're hovering over our list items, if we're hovering over an item in particular, any particular item, we want to force the opacity to be one. So if we're hovering over the entire list, change everything to 0 0.05 opacity. But if we're hovering over a particular item, change its opacity to one, right? And there we go. And now let's do that same transition effect because it's a little, this is a little jarring, right? So let's add another transition here. So we'll say comma. I'd like to do a line break. You don't have to do a line break. I do a line break for readability. Opacity 0.3s ease. And now we have this nice little transition effect. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Last thing I wanna do is just make that second item bigger um, as, as just by default, right? So we can do that very simply. I'm just going to say our, we can target our second nth child, right? So our list item that is that matches the nth child too. So our second nth child, we're going to scale up. We're gonna do the same scale thing right here. Boom, boom, boom. So that's great, however, it's also big, right? It's also big and we want it to scale back down as we're not highlighted or hovered over a different item. So this is a little bit of a complex selector. As we're not hovered over our, our container is when we want this to apply. So here's our container, remember our unordered list. So as we're not hovered over our container, then we want our list item, second aisle item to be scaled up. And that's how this works. So think through, as you're writing these complex selectors, just think logically, what is it that you want this to do? As we're not hovered over our list item, we want our second item to scale up. So that is what this is saying. So this one's probably the most complex of all of them, but there we go, that's it, it's pretty fun, right? Okay, and lastly, on mobile, how is this gonna look? Well, this is all right, but you see it scales up a little bit weird, a little odd. 
a little bit close to the edge. So I just don't want any of these things applying. This is just sort of cosmetic. We're making this look nice, but it doesn't really necessarily look the best on mobile. So let's not make this work on mobile. So I only want these, these uh, properties to apply. We still want our border radius and everything, but only these properties to apply when we're on a larger screen or, and also a, a, a non-touch device. So like a device with a mouse, because mouse is, allows us to do this hover effect. So I'm gonna say at media, let's zoom in here, at media, min width. So the minimum width of the screen needs to be 767 pixels. So larger screens, right? And hover, so, and we are able to hover and we're able to hover over things. So those are our two selectors right there or two media queries, I should say. Then I'm gonna highlight all this and hit shift tab and that'll reformat everything. And you see none of this is now applying on mobile because we're smaller than 767 pixels. And then on large screens, on larger screens, this is working. So. That is how this works. The only other changes I've made in my code is I've abstracted these values right here into uh, custom properties over here. I've Let's go down to the code here. I've abstracted them into custom properties and just pulled them in down here just so it's easier to change and update. And lastly, I've added some borders in here just if someone wanted to change around some borders. But that's about it. That's how we built this. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned a little something here. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about this. If you enjoyed this and want more code snippets in my Code Curious membership, I have a whole code catalog with tons over, well over 100 different code snippets like this and other tutorial videos, just sort of training you on these other things that you can do with code within Squarespace. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.